and do what the song title says. Four thirteen. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. Forth to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are men now serve him against a numbered foe. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will veil you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Where do the calls or danger be never wanting there? Well, good evening. It's good to see everybody. Sam told me he's, he's going to be rebellious, so I think we, we get the rebels on this side. I think we identified a couple of rebels last week, and we have another one, so I don't know. This could turn into like a Star Wars thing if we're not careful, but I might be the only Star Wars nerd that recognizes that. Don't look at me like that, Quincy. Now you won't even say anything. Whew, man, I tell you, every Wednesday it rolls around. We just need to pray for each other. If this, if this isn't a reminder we need to pray for each other, I don't know what is. So I know we got some prayer requests. We're going to lift each other's burdens, and we're going to hear, hear from the Word of God tonight. So let's look to the Lord and ask him to bless all things. Father, we thank you. Lord, I pray that as we are here meeting in your house, that you will help roll our burdens away. Lord, I pray that as we uh, come to you, Lord, I know many uh, have contacted me already, and, and they're, they're dealing with illness, they're dealing with uh, sick people in their family, they're dealing with issues beyond their control. But Lord, we know that all things are under your control. So Lord, as we cast our cares upon you, Lord, lift up our hearts and give us grace that we may find the grace to help in our time of need and be glorified tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's grab that hymn book again. Turn to page 451 as Brother Barry comes to lead us once again. We've got an annoying buzz on this monitor speaker up here, if you know what that is. <coughs> 451, where could I go? Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend. To help me in the end, where could I go to the Lord? 451, neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, 
Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. All right. We'll take some prayer requests um, here in just a second. Um, all right. Um, okay. Hold on. One more thing. Got it. So if I don't write things down, it's gone. So. All right, a few things uh, to pray about tonight. Um, Pray for Micah Smith. She injured her back earlier this week uh, while she was working out, which once again reaffirms my view that working out is not good for you. But, you know, some people just persist in their ways. But she did hurt her back, and and Derek is gone. He is um, overseeing uh, some Marines in some Marines. I want to make sure that didn't sound like submarines. So <clears throat> he is in New York City, or at least maybe en route to New York City. So please pray for him. She is uh, kind of down for the count, and also um, you know pray for the kids as well. Tom and Lynn are both sick tonight, uh, so if you'll pray for them. Uh, the Turpins have been fighting something as, as well, uh, so please keep them in prayer. I am slowly recovering um, from my bronchitis. I have made some improvement, but it's still just marginal at best. Uh, so please uh, please continue to pray for me. Um, let's see. Lisa and I are traveling out tomorrow uh, to head to Florida to attend the funeral for Paul Houck uh, this weekend. We will be back in time for Sunday, uh, Lord willing. I know Sam looked up at me like, <laughs> boy, don't say that, <laughs> because he knows. He knows. He's picked me up. He's gone to pick me up and had to turn around because my flight didn't make it. So um, we'll, uh, so we'll see. So please pray. It's another opportunity to pray. And so, um, so we'll, we'll be flying out tomorrow. Uh, the kids are dispersing to various places, the logistics of which I don't know if I fully understand, but, um, we are, uh, dispersing the children. And so if you'll pray for smoothness as we kind of drop them off as well, um, in two weeks, I think it's two weeks. Um, I'll be heading off to annual training as well. I'll be splitting time between Rhode Island and Massachusetts with my battalion. And uh, I just found out I will be getting uh, what we call in the Army a chaplain candidate. And that's someone who is um, working their way through seminary. And as they are, they're allowed to get some uh, on-the-job training, so to speak. And our candidates need mentors. And so I've been selected to be the mentor for this uh, chaplain candidate. Uh, probably for the next two years or so. So if you'll pray for me and uh, pray for him too. Uh, his name is Ricky Rodriguez. Uh, he's he's going to need some prayer, I'll tell you that. And so um, pray for his orders to go through. Uh, pray for him to accept me. And once he actually meets me in person and um, that all things go well, he's really, really excited. And it's, uh, it's, it's always a thrill to be able to mentor people, especially um, people that are really earnestly seeking it. He's transferring from another unit to come to come to us in Rhode Island, so it's going to be exciting. Uh, pray for the Goodwills. They uh, had another doctor's appointment this afternoon for Eleanor, so if you'll just pray. Uh, she's doing okay. Eleanor's okay, but they're just, uh, you know, doing some follow-ups and such, and so if you'll just continue to pray for them. <clears throat> okay, those are all the ones I'm tracking so far. So does anybody have any prayer requests that you'd like to share? Quincy. Let's see, is heading to camp on Saturday. Now, are you coming back before you go to college, or are you going to college from there? Okay, so you're coming. Okay, all right. So he's going to camp on Saturday, so pray for safe travels there. <coughs> Anybody else? Yes, Juan, in the back. Yes. We'll pray for JJ's discharge packet from the Air Force. <coughs> it's working its way through the approval chain. So, um, yes. Sorry about that, Ethan. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, travel to. Okay. So uh, for our students in uh, high school fellowship, uh, their last day of academics uh, will be tomorrow. So big tests. So pray for those big tests, tests and quizzes, to quote his older brother, and travel to South Carolina on Friday. We'll be praying for that. Did I see another hand? Yes, Tracy. Oh my. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yes. keep it in <clears throat> yes yes the um, you know if you hadn't said anything I'd be able to yep yes McClure's the McClure's yes all right Wheels were turning, and they just, the gerbil fell off. So it's, uh, but yeah, we got, so we'll pray for them. <clears throat> What's that? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yes. Absolutely. So we'll pray for, um, we'll pray for recovery from the typhoon in Guam and for the Kissel family and uh, for the McClure's and other missionaries, um, maybe that you know, I know we know some, now that you mentioned, I honestly was not tracking that a typhoon hit, and so I appreciate you letting me know about that. <clears throat> um, let's see, okay, so we'll pray for them. Anybody else, prayer request? No, okay, well, uh, let's break up, find a prayer partner, we'll come back in uh, a few minutes, and we'll continue our services.
memory ain't failed me yet. That's good. Wonderful words of life. Let's stand as we sing. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sing that last. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Jesus only Savior. Sanctify forever. Beautiful words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Thank you. you. May be seated. All right. Let's open to Proverbs chapter 18. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 18. This will be my second to last message in this Wednesday night series in the book of Proverbs. And I'm prayerfully considering what the, what the next one will be. I have a, I have a good feeling. Um, you know, I want it to be a little bit more than that. So, <clears throat> pray. <laughs> that's a good thing, right? So, <laughs> it's like, yeah, so let's go with more than a, a good feeling. So, um, pray that the Lord, uh, you know, leads me, directs me. And um, we'll have another we'll have another message from Proverbs next week, <clears throat> and then we'll kick off the new series whenever I get back from annual training. Well, we're in Proverbs chapter 18, and down in the last verse, verse number 24, is where we will draw our our text for tonight. I want to talk to us about friends and wisdom for our friendships. And the Bible says here, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wisdom that you've given to us in this wonderful book of Proverbs. Lord, I pray that through this book you will counsel us, guide us by your wisdom, help us to fear you and, and to walk with you, and, to, and Lord, to know you. And Lord, as it pertains to this matter of friends, I pray that you'll give us wisdom. Lord, help us to see beyond just the, the, the superficial things of friendship. And Lord, help us to know how, how we can be good friends and how we can make good friends. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless all. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, of course, as we talk about friendship, I want you to think about your friends. All of them, any of them, maybe the lack thereof. And then I want you to think about not just friends, but good friends. And just in your mind, think about what separates, maybe in your own distinction, regardless of how anybody else would, would consider or classify things, what makes a friend different from a good friend, right? And then maybe if you go even further, what, what, what's the difference between a good friend and a great friend, or even a great friend and a best friend, right? Think about those distinctions. Now, also think about... Are you open, personally, to making new friends? Do you reach out to friends for advice? And which one of your friends would you reach out to advice for? And, and to cut off any caveats at the, at the pass, you know, I know sometimes it depends on the situation or the background or the experience or trust level or things like that, but... Why would you go to any particular friend for advice? What about that person would say, yeah, you know what? I can go ask them a question. I can open up to them. <clears throat> now, think about your agenda. Think about your life, your calendar, <clears throat> how you spend your time. Do you spend any time with friends? Do you make time for friends, right? Or is social media or living vicariously through your spouse, 
or a sibling or <clears throat> through social media and say, you know what, I can, I can handle it from afar. Is that enough? Is text messages enough to consider that a quote-unquote friendship? Now, I'm not prescribing or describing. I'm just asking questions, all right? There's no judgment here yet. We'll get to the Word of God. <clears throat> now, I will tell you, memes are one of my love languages, okay? <clears throat> and I like to exchange memes. I hunt for memes, all right? If you don't know what memes are, you can just look up memes, and you can start there, and then you can learn how to pronounce that correctly, and, and just go there, and it's a treasure trove of, of intellectual genius that we call memes. It's fantastic, right? And I've looked at memes about friendship because I'll tell you, they contain a lot of nuggets of truth, right? And I'll share some of my favorite ones, right? Adult friendships require appointments now, like, are you free March 15th at 3 p.m.? No? Okay, I'll see you in a decade. I mean... <laughs> It seems like it, right? When you're a kid, you can just say, oh, can I go to so-and-so's house? And yeah, you would go and you'd ride your bike and come back when the lights came on, right? And you're drinking water out of the hose and everything's fine. At least we thought everything was fine. There may be disease in there. We don't know. Um, <clears throat> but we, that's, that's how we lived our life. But now we need appointments, right? <clears throat> I read another one that said, best friends don't care if your house is clean. They care if you have food. I'm like, man, that's true, because if I'm going to come over to your house, I want to know if you're going to feed me, right? And if you come to my house, you're going to come right around dinner time, right? I know. You're smart. Do that. We do have food. Come over anytime you want. Text in advance, all right? I'm that kind of friend, all right? Now, <clears throat> how many of you have a best friend at work, right? They're your bestie at work or a work bestie, right? Now, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. I brought my modern lexicon, all right, to help us understand what a work bestie is. It's a coworker turned friend who shares the same daily torture as you do, who understands perfectly your moans and your sighs and your eye rolls because they're going through it with you, right? It could also be a coworker that you mainly communicate with um, through texts and side eyes and glances and sarcasm as you have to suffer through the same type of work meetings or business phone calls, right? <clears throat> and they're also the one that you'll always go out to lunch with, you'll search for the best snacks, you'll take a walk, or you'll grab a coffee any time that you have a break together. That's, that's your work bestie. Now that's a lot of funny wisdom, right? At least I think so. And I will tell you, it's because friendship means a lot to people. We were built in the image of God, and a part of that likeness is that we have a social likeness. Now we have varying degrees of where we may feel comfortable socializing, but friendship is a major aspect of who we are, and fortunately, God gives us wisdom to address what friendship looks like and what it should look like, and what's at stake in our friendships. Because if we're honest, right, friendships are, are kind of a matter of feel, right? They, we kind of, there's so many nuances about it, and, and what is real friendship, and what's kind of regular friendship, and what's an acquaintance, and what's not, and, and will these types of friendships last? Well, we want to examine that, but where it all began, as I mentioned, uh, as I alluded to just a moment ago, is friendship all began with God. It started with God himself, and God is our friend because we're Christians, because we're saved. God is our friend through Jesus Christ. In fact, friendship began with God. It's who God is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in eternal, powerful interactions of love. The heart of God is friendship reaching out to us to make new friends. That's to make us friends. When God spoke to Moses, look, this isn't anything new. When God spoke to Moses, does anyone remember how it was described? God spoke to Moses as a man speaks to his friend, right? God's affirmation to Moses was simple. And he said in exec, uh, excuse me, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 12, I will be with you. The heart of friendship is being there for another person. Jesus said this in, in the most ultimate way. Right In John chapter 15 and verse 15, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you, you all know what he called them, friends. I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Friendship began in heaven. It didn't begin on earth, and friendship came down to earth through the gospel. Now, the wisdom of Proverbs guides us into strong friendships 
that God is creating, not just with us, but also through us. God is saying to us, hey, let's be friends. And let's also make and maybe even win friends, but let's do that wisely. Now, what is a friend? If you want to flip over to Proverbs 20 to read verse 6 with me, you can. <clears throat> now, this will, be, this, will be, this will strike you as a little funny in a friendship sermon, but let's, uh, let's roll with this. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Now, there's a story that I read about an Assyrian king from the uh, 900s, B.C., all right? His, came, his name was Adad uh, Neriah, right? And if that's not his name, that's as close as I can get to it, okay? It's recorded that he would say this about himself. I am royal. I am lordly. I am mighty. I am honored. I am exalted. I am glorified. I am powerful. I am all-powerful, I am brilliant, I am lion brave, I am manly, I am supreme, I am noble. How many friends do you think this king had? Do you want to be his friend? No, no, why? Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. <clears throat> that means they're so stuck on themselves and they have no problem telling you how blessed you are to be in their presence. <clears throat> But self-importance is not a virtue. <laughs> People don't like that. The verse goes on, a faithful friend, who can find, right? Because that person is rare. Who, who can find them? Now, we can <clears throat> because we're looking, just like the Marines, we're looking for a few good men and women because it's 2023. They are out there, all right? Now, let's find where. Let's start in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. And since you're close, you can go ahead and flip over there if you like. <clears throat> a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Now, like it or lump it, a brother is stuck with you, <laughs> right? A brother, to some degree, right, is obligated to be some kind of safety net. Now, some of you, if you want to cast your glares at your brother, go ahead. I'll afford you some space and time for that. If you want to text your brother and said, the preacher just said you need to be there for me, so I need 50 bucks. So Now, now maybe that's a little too far. But, you know, if they're not here, then you can just, you know, say that's what I said and they'll have no idea. Family, that's what family's for. They are there to be there for you. All joking aside, family is supposed to be there for you. But to go a little bit further, a friend chooses you. It's a choice. We, we don't choose our family. Your sisters are who your sisters are. Your brothers are who your brothers are. Your parents are who your parents are, right? But a friend, you chose them and they chose you. And that's what we're trying to emphasize through this verse. A true friend, right, that's there. That's there with you in those times. They are rock solid. Now, how many people like that do you really know? Compared with those who just smile, make promises, and create expectations, but they don't follow through. Now, I'm not trying to be ugly, but real. Because there are people that say, call me if you need anything. I need something. Hello? 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 So I found out that people my age do this. If you're too young, I, it's a phone, okay? So that's, that's sign language. That's old person. That's 40 and 50-year-old for phone, okay? So in case you're not sure what I'm holding up there. <clears throat> How many people, when you call them, say, oh, yeah, I'll be there for you. They weren't there. I remember there was a time where I really needed help with something, and I called four people, and none of them helped me. And I don't mean they, they didn't answer the phone and didn't get back to me. I mean, they told me straight up, I'm not going to help you. Can't help you. <laughs> Dude, what's a guy going to do? What do I got to do to get some help? Right? <clears throat> now, human nature without the power of God is shallow. Human nature without the power of God is self-congratulatory. We will pat ourselves on the back. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But... If and when you find that true friend, that true friend that's rock solid, that stays there, that's with you, appreciate him or her. And the gospel, and I would say only the gospel, creates those types of rare people, which means that if you've received the gospel, you have the privilege and the opportunity to be one of those rare people. Someone that, if I were to paraphrase Psalm 15 and verse number 4, people that keep their promises even when it hurts, 
right? Now, what does it say? He that he honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. Sometimes a friend will do some things for you that's to their neglect that hurts, that costs them something. We may call that just being sacrificial, but that's what friends do. They sacrifice, right? They will give up something, whether it's comfort or cash, who knows? But they want to be that kind of person that's, that's there, right? And by the way, if, if you stumble upon some things and you know that somebody in your life claims to be your friend but does not uh, find themselves in alignment with these virtues, I- encourage them, help them, uh, you know, challenge them, but, but if they're not a friend, find a real friend, okay? Because friends show themselves to be entirely trustworthy, to paraphrase Titus chapter 2 and verse 10, and, and that is they show all good fidelity, right? They are semper fidelis. They are always faithful. And when God gives you a friend like that who's tried and tr- tested and true, cherish that friend. Don't let him go, right? Because that kind of friendship is straight from the heart of Jesus Christ, right? Think about this, John chapter 13 and verse 1. Jesus says this, ha- or it said about Jesus, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. It means Jesus doesn't stop loving them. Do you remember what he called Judas? When Judas came to betray him with a kiss, what did he call him? It wasn't dirtbag. I know that's, that's the King Joe version when I get upset with people, all right? It's the, you've got to be kidding me, Judas, knife hand, okay? But Jesus, so much better than Joseph, he said, friend, <laughs> friend. Even when the next words out of his mouth were, betrayest, uh, betrayest thou me with a kiss? We, we were friends, Judas. We still are, Judas. We're friends. Why would you do this to me? Wow. Friends love to the end. And by the way, before we jump all over Judas's back, think about all the other imperfect disciples, right? We get a pretty clear painting of who Peter is. And I love Peter for all the good and the challenges. He's, he's, he's a great man. But we also understand that, that sometimes to love uh, great people and, and determined people and motivated people and, and people that maybe are, are brash and, and uh, ahead of themselves a little bit, uh, it, it takes a lot of love. Well, Peter, of course, would deny Jesus three times. And he proclaimed his own goodness. He said, I'll never deny you, right? And then what did he do? He denied him, of course. And then I remember that moment, reading about that moment where Peter denies him. And Jesus just looks over at him. And you can just, in my mind's eye, I just picture them looking at each other and having that moment. That moment of recognition. And Peter understands what Jesus is conveying with his face in that look at that moment. And it's utter betrayal. And when Jesus looked at him, Peter saw it in himself. He knew that Jesus saw the failure. But what does the Bible say? He loved them to the end. I'll tell you, I've had some friends fail me. (laughs) Not a criticism, just a reality. I've had some people that I loved let me down. And, it, and it's hard. It's, it hurts. I'm also thankful for reconciliation. I'm also thankful for when the times I've let people down, that they would be interested in reconciliation, willing to extend forgiveness and bring me back into their life. The knife cuts both ways, my friends. It cuts both ways. And this is what Jesus is demonstrating. He, he knew the failures of Peter and John and everybody, right? <clears throat> but Jesus loved to the end. It's, a, it's, it's that love that Peter felt that caused his repentance, that brought him back to the fold, that led him to continue on in ministry faithfully to the Lord. What is friendship? It's loving to the end. It's total acceptance. It's complete forgiveness. It's painful. It it sent Jesus to the cross. But here we are following his example and seeing how he really loves a friend. A true friend knows who you really are, but they do not walk away. Well, now there's more. The other side of the coin, if you will. 
There are times where friends will cause friction in your life. And that's just to be expected. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17 says this, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Proverbs 27 and verse 6, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Now this is also a part of being a true friend, not just the uh, all-accepting consistency, but also the blunt honesty. Now some of you may be saying... Now you're speaking my language. Okay, well, let's, let's make sure we're understanding what real friendship looks like. It's friendship that sharpens with a purpose. It's like sharpening the blade of a, of a sword. You don't want people to get injured, but you want people to be ready to confront the challenges of life. Because God wants every one of us to be sharp for him. Not sharp in cutting people, but sharp for him, right? <clears throat> and by ourselves, according to this verse... We can get dull and blunted and lose our edge. Now, does anyone in here have a pocket knife on them? Everybody. Fantastic, right? Look, it's not a gun. We're not not singling people out and writing your name down on a list so the Germans can come by and, and, you know, pay a little visit at your house. I don't care about that. If you have a pocket knife, it should be sharp, right? Well, it better be because what good is a dull knife? It's not good for anything, unless you want to spend an hour trying to cut that rope. Anybody want to do that? Anybody got that kind of time? Anybody have that kind of patience? Not this guy, all right? Everyone wants a pocket knife that has a sharp edge. It's a no-brainer. Well, every one of us needs a friend who will not flatter us, but will at times take the measures to refine us, to sharpen our blade, to be the iron that sharpens iron, to make us sharp. Now, again, this is not reckless mouthing off. It's not self-appointed critics going out of their way to express their opinions. But the Proverbs are making it clear that a true friend in our life will make us better with respectful confrontation, right? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Sometimes a friend will provoke you, but respectfully in a way that sharpens you. A real friend will provoke and challenge you. Now let's be fair. You don't have to agree with everything that your friend says, but may I submit you will want to listen. In fact, Proverbs says that a wise man increases in strength, yea, he increases in learning. And your friends want to help you learn. If you've been on the receiving end of that, it's difficult, isn't it? But it makes us better. We all need it. Now, I will also say, based on our various backgrounds, experiences, families, um, uh, education, um, all sorts of stuff, every one of us has our own different perspectives. And some seem biblical, and some are biblical. What we need help with is someone to help us with the stuff that seems biblical, right? That seems Christ-like, but isn't. We need those edges smoothed out, right? We need a friend who's going to be honest enough to help us out, to see from the outside that we need to come together. I'll tell you what, I remember I took a shop class in high school, and it was fun because I didn't do a lot of that stuff growing up, and we made this little tic-tac-toe board, right? And we, we used all the saws, and we, we cut it out, and then we sanded it up. And, and I remember the teacher was telling me, he's the nicest guy. I mean, he was the nicest guy ever, right? And he loved, he was just passionate about teaching shop class, right? And I thought it was cool because we got goggles, and we're using this big old machinery, and stuff is flying through the air. And, and we're young, so we don't care about our lungs. And so, you know, everything was awesome. And I remember I was so proud of that thing when I was done. And it looked good, and it worked, by the way. I don't don't know if it's possible to mess up a tic-tac-toe board, but, you know, it it came out all right. And he's like, man, this looks good. It looks really nice. He sanded it down. And I'm like, yeah, he did. He goes, but you put the holes on the wrong side. And I'm going, how can you put the holes on the wrong side of a block of wood? I, I mean, I didn't get that. Now, some of you are going, how do you not know what side of the wood to put? Well, I didn't know, all right? But then he taught me. 
And he said, because you wanted to go this way with, with, with the wood, not the other way you put it, because obviously there's holes in it. He goes, but if you want to do it a little bit better, a little bit more refined. And I, now that was in my sophomore year of high school, which was years ago. And so I still remember it. And, you know, just that one moment, that one moment from shop class, a guy taking time who was passionate and excited, wasn't a threat to me, wasn't confronting me, just trying to help me be better at something that he really loved. You know what? All of us as Christians should love following Jesus. And we should get excited when we see other people wanting to follow Jesus. And I'm going to tell you right now, you will see people who aren't too far or not as far as you in their walk with the Lord. And you will see them do some things that look dull and where they're losing their edge for the Lord. You know why the Lord has allowed you to observe that about them in their life? Simple. So you can go home and talk trash about them. I mean, isn't that so much fun? You know, the best place to talk about people is behind their back. You know why? They'll never... Fine. I'm letting too many secrets out, aren't I? So I'm making sure people are paying attention. God has allowed you to observe that moment because he's saying, hey, iron, see that iron over there that's looking a little bit dull? I need you to go sharpen them up. Now John will come along in his own way and say, if you see a brother sin a sin that's not unto death, you know, not something that the Lord needs to deal with exclusively himself, <clears throat> you will pray for him. And God will give you life. And the word there for life is also a word used to describe the word of God. And then you will go and deliver that word and say, hey, Frank, can I talk to you for a second? Man, you have been so faithful lately. Man, I see you reading your Bible. <clears throat> I see you doing all this. I see you be coming to church. Man, that's awesome. Can I help you with something? And let me tell you, this works. One time I was at, I was at work. I was a security guard and uh, armed security at a grocery store. Now, let me just say, side note, if you need an armed security guard at a grocery store, let me just affirm, there's a reason for that, okay? <laughs> I thought I was going to be bored. I was never bored. <clears throat> My, we called them road captains. He's the captain. He's the officer that, run, that drives around and he checks on all the, on, on all the stops. And I had, admittedly, I had a bad attitude, right? I had two things in my life, a Bible and a bad attitude. <laughs> And he came up, and he's like, how's it going? I'm like, oh, it's going pretty good, sir. And he's like, uh, can I talk to you for a second? I said, sure. And he goes, man, I see you got your Bible. I see you reading your Bible. And I thought I'm going to get in trouble for reading the Bible on the clock. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man, here it comes. And he goes, but I'm going to tell you right now, you got a bad attitude. And I said, excuse me? Because <clears throat> I was much less sanctified uh, than I am today. And <clears throat> he's like, that's right. You heard it. I'm going, oh, my goodness. And he, he just laid it down. He wasn't rude. But he, he called the facts what they were. He, he called it like it was. And I took, I took a step back mentally, and I looked at him, and I said, you're right. You're absolutely right. And we talked for 45 minutes, and he's like, why do you have a bad attitude? I'm like, my relationship with my parents is messed up. Things aren't going well. I made some bad financial decisions, but I got a really nice car. But still bad financial decisions, and I can't afford my life, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'm trying to figure out how to get out of the mess I'm in. We talked for 45 minutes. You know who that dude was? He was a pastor. I got sabotaged, man. Some pastor came up and got me. Those pastors, you, you got to be careful. They're tricky, all right? That's just from me to you. But, man, he helped me. Regardless of what his position was, God allowed him to see something in my life that I guarantee you, I look back at Captain Henry and I go, that man created a turning point in my life because it wasn't a week later after, after he left and I prayed and I figured some things out with God. Things started going around because I finally had a heart that wasn't stony anymore. God used him to call me out and things started turning around. I guarantee you, if it weren't for Captain Henry, I would have never left Lakeland. I would have never left that place. I would have never moved to Tampa. And Tampa is where everything happened, including all my babies being born. Ta this man, you don't understand it. You don't understand what one conversation from a friend to another person that needs to hear. You don't know how it can change their life. You don't know how it can change their life. Be a friend. Be a friend. Yes, your friend is going to rub you the wrong way. But listen. Be someone that wants to listen. Just be someone that wants to listen. I'm going to turn this message into like 16 different messages, it looks like. But let me, let me end with this. Man, that's a long sermon. Okay. <clears throat>
two must be related. <clears throat> Let me just tell you, I wouldn't be who I am today without my friends. I wouldn't be the person, I wouldn't be the husband, the father, pick a role, okay? None of that would happen without my friends. We all need a little help from our friends. I wouldn't have the friends I have today. I wouldn't be in, in, in doing this. I, we wouldn't be friends. You wouldn't want to be my friend, okay, if it, if it weren't for the friends that came along. You just, you just don't know how you can touch a life and see it change forever if you'll listen to the Spirit of God and be a friend and see God work through you in that friend's life. So listen, if your friend is coming to you and they're starting to rub you the wrong way for the right reasons, let them, let them sharpen that iron. Okay? If you don't have any friends who, who are willing to sharpen your iron and, and, and they're just going around and they're playing games and it's all superficial and it's, and it's just not helping you grow as a Christian, let me tell you, friend, you, you need new friends. And I don't care if it's boyfriend, girlfriend, I don't care if it's best friend, former best friend, work bestie, I, I don't care who it is. If they're not really helping you get close to Christ, that's not a friend at all. Be a friend and have friends that bring you closer to who matters the most. And that's the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Who's that? Jesus Christ. The source of all of our friendship. He's called us friends. Let's go be friends and make friends the way the Lord wants us. Father, we thank you for your love and grace and truth. Thank you for sharing your heart of friendship and love with us. By your grace, I pray that we would be empowered to go be the friends that we need to be, that we would have courage in the moment uh, of, of sharpening. And Lord, that you would sharpen us, that we can go out and help others as well. Lord, I thank you for my friends that have come along in my past. Lord, I pray that you will help me to be the friend that I need to be to, to these dear people and others who you bring into my life. Lord, be glorified as we all seek to be a friend like you are to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, really not, not any new announcements. Uh, graduation Sunday is this Sunday, and uh, that's, uh, that's really the big one. And so pray for each other, love each other, send that text message, and, uh, and have a great rest of your week. And uh, we'll pray one more time because I just like to pray, and uh, then we'll see you on Sunday. Father, we thank you. May your love and grace abound towards us, and I pray, Father, that as we go our way and depart in peace, that your face will shine upon us. Be with us as we travel, as we return to our homes. Help us to get sleep, and Lord, help us to have the divine appointments that you desire, and help us to be the loving friends that you desire for us to be as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll see you next time. Oh, there we go.